Hi, this is Tim of the 1916 Company. Welcome and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me. My email is still tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's still in the description below. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any of our platforms, please reach out to me directly. I am still tmasso at thewatchbox.com for pricing. Today, we are discussing a 2022 launch, one of the most exotic watches ever offered by H. Moser & C. of Schaffhausen. This is the Pioneer Cylindrical Tourbillon, the winner of the GPHG Tourbillon Watch Prize for that year. It almost feels like a collaboration with a more flamboyant brand, like one of the crossover watches created with MBNF, but this is all Moser. And for good reason, it highlights one of their in-house competencies, which is the manufacture of balances, escapements, and hairsprings. And you can see that distinctive overcoil cylindrical hairspring, just like a marine chronometer. Now, this is the Pioneer cylindrical tourbillon, which means it's based on the Pioneer sports watch. So, 42.8 millimeter diameter steel case, 15.3 millimeters thick from lug tip to lug tip, 51.1 millimeters with a 22 millimeter spacing between the lugs. And because this is a Pioneer, automatic winding, well loomed, screw down crown, 120 meters of water resistance. It's a big watch though. And you can see on my wrist of 16 centimeters circumference, it fits and I would wear it happily and comfortably, but I'm right at the limit. You can see how on each side, the lugs are getting very close to the edge of my wrist. And then from over the top, you can see that it's pushing right out to the edge. Now, when lugs overlap the edge of your wrist, that for me is the aesthetic no-go zone. I'm not there yet. So if your wrist is my size or larger, game on. And while it's not a thin watch, it actually does have a fairly high domed vaulted crystal and a domed bezel. So it will slip underneath a jacket cuff, if not the tightest of dress sleeves. We have a lovely medium rectangular scale Nubuck alligator leather. It's got that Nubuck velvety feel and a matte finish, monotone stitch, folded edge. On the bottom, calfskin Moser factory strap, no crimping, no gouging. The case is actually drilled quite inboard. You can see how far the pivot point of the strap is inboard of the end of the lugs because it's been moved closer to the case. That allows the watch to wear more easily on a small wrist. And because it is close hold to the case flank, a curved spring bar is used so that there's no impingement to the motion of the strap. And you're able to pull the strap straight down around the watch if you do have that borderline small wrist like mine. The buckle is steel. You can see it features satin finish, a grooved snailing and polish all at the same time. And Moser watches generally feature buckles that echo the design of the case. So you could see that there is a pronounced coining inside the recesses of the case. And then that coining is also present on the buckle. So attention to detail, always nice to see. Moser cases are machined and then hand finished which is how they get these great depth effects and the interior detail within the recesses of the lugs. Now you can see there's a soft bevel on top of the lugs, satination on each side. The case band is otherwise polished. If we overlook the recesses, we have a polished bezel that stepped somewhat inboard of the case flank to visually thin it all out. And then we have a media blasted Moser branded crown. Turn it along to the dial side. We have Moser's signature funky blue. That's the color of the dial at its center. Now the fume or smoked fade is another signature of Moser. And you can see that it is convex. So it's got a domed profile, globalite ceramic loom. So these are three dimensional blocks of loom. Let's take a quick look at that in the dark. You can see the watch is quite easy easy to read and there's enough luminescence that it actually illuminates the interior of the case. Now taking a look at the movement, you can see it is a anthracite PVD. It's comprised of satin tops and then all of the edges feature bevels and you can see those polished bevels within all of the skeletonized interiors. We have a keyless works over at three o'clock. You can see the steel components all have a fine satin treatment on their tops. All screw heads are black polished. And then we have a combination of satination, PVD anthracite, mirrored beveling inside and out on the one minute flying tourbillon. And the, the tourbillon carriage here is the most finely finished part of the watch. It's where you see the greatest attention to detail. The tourbillon, of course, is a flying tourbillon because it has no upper bridge. You can see how on the bottom, the tourbillon has a set of ceramic ball bearings to give it 
a good wide stance and brace it well. And those ceramic ball bearings are all the support the tourbillon needs. There doesn't have to be another bridge on the top, so you get unobstructed visual access to that for which you've paid. It beats at 21,600 vibrations per hour. It is a one-minute tourbillon, so it can act as the seconds hand of the watch. It has a cylindrical hairspring with upper and lower overquills. The cylindrical hairspring with overquills is exactly would have been used on vintage marine chronometers in the 18th, 19th, and early 20th century with the most centered mass and perfectly concentric breathing. So whatever position it would have been on the high seas, it would be keeping consistent time relative to gravity. And it has the same benefit to a wristwatch, which much like a marine chronometer, moves around through different orientations far more than a pocket watch. And Moser, through its precision engineering subsidiary, makes the hairspring, the balance, and the escapement. These are very challenging pieces to manufacture, which is why a lot of full-fledged, quote, movement manufacturers don't actually make these parts. All the wheels are satinated. You can see the barrel is open. The watch is an automatic winder with a three-day power reserve. You can see that the barrel has been skeletonized and opened up on both sides so you can see it and appreciate it. You can see that coiled mainspring and try to estimate how many of the 72 hours are remaining. And you can actually do that when you get familiar with the coiling of the mainspring and you have visual access to it at all times. The rotor at center pivots on unlubricated hybrid ceramic bearings for efficiency and low maintenance requirements. And it uses a bi-directional pole-based magic lever winding system, which you can see under my thumb off to the side. And once again, all of this water resistant down to 120 meters. It is quite beautiful and intriguing, regardless of which side you look at. So we often say that some of the most intriguing and beautiful watch movements make you wish you could wear your watch upside down while well, Moser is way ahead of you. It's also a fascinating watch the way the movement itself fills almost the entirety of this giant case and the artful use of this dished concave bezel spacer with its satin bowl-like finish really creates a trick of the eye to make it look like the entirety of the case is filled edge to edge. A beautiful and very rare watch. Reach out to tmasso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details. One more thing, just take a look at that stud holder. Beveled, satinated with a black polished stud, free sprung for durability and adjusted in all positions.